everyone? I'm Don Ferguson and welcome back to another dope ass episode of something new here in the Teak Life Basement Bar. Yep, it's in the frame. So before we crack open two bottles, be sure to check out Tequila and Spirits magazine where you can get a free magazine subscription in your email box. Come on people, get with the program. Also, on Instagram, follow our other digital media partner, hashtag find the bird and for you old school people that's the number sign what are we trying today it's like a double play get it it's a baseball reference people you wait until you see these bottles disbelief tequila we are trying a blanco and a reposado look at this this is crazy. you know we just gotta crack them open talk about it and taste let's roll the intro strike Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Disbelief Tequila. And look it, they're on pedestals. It's like when you get an autographed baseball and you put it in a container, you're five years old and you're excited because Aurelio Lopez from the Detroit Tigers signed it. Okay, I realize nobody knows who Aurelio Lopez is but me because I was a Detroit Tigers fan and he was my very first autograph. All right, nobody cares about my baseball history, but yes, I'm a big baseball fan when I was a kid. I don't know about so much anymore, but I do enjoy going to a game and nothing speaks baseball like tequila. All right, maybe I made that last part up because you know it's beer and tequila and hot dogs and stuff like that, but we're here to talk about tequila, disbelief tequila, where opulence, meets tequila and if you don't know what opulence means it means great wealth or luxuriousness and this is a luxuriousness tequila in a baseball bottle we're gonna talk about that don't go anywhere before we crack these open let's talk about the particulars it's nam 1438 and that's the distillery that they use it's a hundred percent blue weber agave and the agave that they use are grown in the highlands, so highlands are typically a little bit sweeter. They're grown in red volcanic soil and they're hand-picked at the peak ripeness. And that's typically around seven, eight years, something like that. It, ju it just all depends. They're both twice distilled and they're both 80 proof. Disbelief Tequila. So where does the name come from? And basically when the owners, the founders of the company were creating a tequila and they tasted this, they thought people were going to be in disbelief that this was actually tequila. There's a lot of tequilas out on the market where you do a sip of it and you're like, mm, it's like burning your insides out. Your feet are curling up. Not this tequila. They didn't want anything with a burn or anything that was harsh at all. Let's talk about the founders, Ralph Golden and Toriano Banks. Now Toriano actually has a clothing line called Baseball Rich. You see where we're going? Baseball, Baseball Rich. Now why is it named Baseball Rich? Well, in baseball, they actually don't have a salary cap, much like the other sports. They have a luxury tax. We're not gonna get into that shit whatsoever, but they don't have a cap, a salary cap. And you shouldn't have a cap in life. You should, you know, just soar to higher heights and hit home runs all the time. And that's kind of their thinking. So that's where this brand actually came together. Now the founders started working with their distillery back in 2017 and it's actually only been out on the market for about a year. You know, the, the pandemic, kind of kind of crazy. We're not going to get into all that, but what we are going to get into is the juice inside these bottles, but the bottles. Look at these people. They're baseballs. It's got a wooden and it, it's like, wow, these are custom bottles. They had to have these made custom and they're, they're just really unique. I've never seen anything like this out in the market. Maybe there is, you know, for something else, maybe vodka or whatever, but not for tequila, but the, the wooden carved baseball top, the, the bottle itself has seams and stitching. Look at that. Can you see that? Can you see that ridiculousness? 
Now, the other thing about it is I am a Detroiter. We're here in Michigan, and it has the old English D on it. I don't know if this is for the Tigers or what. I, I have no idea. But we talked about the clothing line before. And on the bottom here, oh, it's another touch. What does it say? A baseball, oh, a production of Baseball Rich. It's all about branding and marketing. So you're tying everything together. If you haven't guessed already, we're trying a Blanco and a Reposado. I've talked too long. My mouth is dry like a summer day in the baseball field sitting in the bleachers. So let's move the camera over and taste. Pop. It's like a hit. A single to first. Drives in an RBI. Whatever. We are trying a Blanco and a Reposado today. Disbelief tequila and on the back of it it says the taste will leave you in disbelief we're gonna see about that I'm using some Glen Cairn tasting glasses and we're going to pour our Blanco first and we are going to let the Reposado breathe now one of the things about this is this is a pretty new brand and you can't really find a lot of information out on the market uh, you know, on the interwebs across the world about this brand. Like, there's just not a lot out there. So, once again, we may be the very first to try, taste, and review. Color. It's a Blanco. I mean, we've been over this, people, so many times. It looks like water, but it's not. It's clear. It's silver, it's white, you know, plata, whatever you want to call it. I want to get into the nosing. So you're getting some agave. I'm getting like a, a vegetal. So you so it's fresh agave. So like almost a, ve a vegetal aroma is like a fresh plant. Something that you just cracked open and that's what you're getting from it. So that's actually a good thing. That's what you want to look for in a tequila, specifically a Blanco little bit of sweetness so what i'm not picking up are alcohol vapors and that's pretty rare a lot of the times now i know the founders didn't want anything that was harsh that had a you know a, a very pungent bite to it and so far especially on the roma you're not getting that there's a little bit of sweetness um a little bit of citrus not too much you're definitely getting a little tiny bit of earthiness and that could be from the soil that the agave is grown in, but it's not overly complex. It's pretty straightforward, but I'm not getting any ethanol whatsoever. We're doing our last swirl. Now, this is not chilled whatsoever. We're just doing room temperature. Maybe I'll give funky. Maybe we will chill it and see if it brings out some more flavors. But let's go in for sip one. Mmm. Definitely not a bite. So it is pretty smooth. You do get a little bit of that pepper on the back end. There's a nice sweetness up front from that cooked agave and i know they do a slow cooking process and typically i think it's around like 30 to 40 hours that they cook the agave i don't for, for the most part i don't know about you know their process but for the most part it's about 30 hours of cooking agave to get it to the point where you can start the distillation getting all those sugars out of it so it can start to ferment but you know we coat the palate first and we got another one so let, let's run this along let's go to two very light very crisp clean you know it kind of coats the mouth i don't know but it, it just it does have a little bit of pepper but it's tequila people if it if, you know you, you've had tequila before but it's not over the top it's not going to light your face on fire like you're steam grilling some barbecue or whatever Let's go to number three, because three is the charm. It's very nice. That's a nice sipper. On your third one, you're getting all that sweetness, a little bit of citrus. I'm, I'm almost picking up some orange rind, maybe an orange peel on the back end, a little bit of lemon as well. Um, some earthiness from the soil. 
but that sweet agave is coming through and a little bit of white pepper on the back end of it, which is really nice. Um, I might also say that there's a hint of dried stone fruit. I could be wrong. It's happened once or twice in my life, but that's what I am picking up. And it, as a base, it's a pretty good sipper. This is a really nice sipper. Let's see about, should we do on the rocks? We got ice and we poured some more in our find the bird shaker. We're going to chill it. Like I didn't want to pour it over whiskey rocks or especially ice cubes because I never like to dilute it. But we're going to see if this will bring out a little bit more flavor. Look at that. Woo! Good to the last drop. Better than Maxwell House. Same aroma, still picking up that, that agave and the vegetal notes, absolutely. Sweetness really shines through, wow. Tones it down even more, and that's really what takes place when you shake it or chill it. I always like to use reusable ice cubes, or you know, if, if you can, just shake it, chill it, and it is definitely bringing out a lot more of those citrus tones, the orange rind, maybe a lemon peel, the, the, the sweet cooked agave, a little earthiness, but it does tone it down. So that white pepper, that pepper finish, which wasn't, which wasn't crazy whatsoever, people, it does tone it down a little bit. All right, we're sliding into the second inning. See what I did there? And we are going with the Reposado. Reposado means rested. For you all that are playing at home that didn't know that, that butcher saying Reposado all the time. Can I get the Reposado? No, it's Reposado. I'm just here to teach and educate people. That's all I'm here to do. I can splice. A Reposado tequila is aged anywhere from two months up to a year. Unfortunately, I couldn't find exactly, you know, how long this one is rested in barrels or casks, and I couldn't even find out what type of cask that they're actually using. Judging by the looks and the, the color of this, I'd probably say around five, six months. Could be wrong, you know, so don't quote me, but it's got a very, well, we'll get to the color in a minute, but that's what I'm looking at. Most of your Reposados on average are aged for about four months. Color. Now we were starting to talk about it and it is a light golden brown, like kind of a, a wheat. So like if you're looking at a, a wheat field and you're thinking, wow, I'm gonna make a lot of money from Wonder Bread. Well, Wonder Bread is not made with wheat, so you're not gonna make a lot of money. But that's what it is, look at that. Really nice color. Um, re really nice. You're looking at the legs coming down. They're just a nice slow cascade. One was trickling down like it was crying because I'm going to drink it. But first, let's do the aroma. Oh, I'm getting wood. I'm totally getting fresh wood up front, which is really, really, really pronounced. So I'm wondering what type of barrels or casks that they're using. In my opinion, I would say they're probably either white American oak or some sort of whiskey or ex bourbon barrel. We've had this breathing like it was an in the park home run. Yeah, the wood's coming through a little bit of vanilla. I'm picking up a little bit of caramel, <sighs> like Cracker Jacks at a baseball game. It's amazing and not a lot of alcohol vapor. So they're, they're, it's very straightforward. Those are the three that I'm picking up. Maybe a little bit of, you know, leather in it. That's not a baseball reference. I'm not just saying that, but there's just a, a unique aroma that's rising up out of this Glen Cairn. So we got to taste people. Come on, round one. Mmm. Oh, wow. That is nice. That is a nice, nice cooked agave sweetness up front. You're getting some vanilla. You're getting some caramel. Oh man, that you're a, a, a slight hint of wood. So some oaks coming. And then what's happening is, is slowly going down, dissipating, and then you get a little 
twinge of pepper, but not much at all. Let's go for inning number two. Straightforward, sweet, very smooth, extremely smooth. Holy shit. Wow. That is, uh, that's quite redonkulous. This is a sipper, people. Wow. I don't know. It might have a home run here. Let's go for number three. That subtle sweetness, nothing harsh, no burn whatsoever. You are really getting a nice vanilla. It's just a pleasant sipper completely. I can see where people, you know, maybe would sip this on, uh, you know, on a whiskey rock, you know, or the whiskey balls, something like that, whatever you want to freeze. I just wouldn't put ice in it. But if you did want to open it up, you could take an eyedropper and maybe two, two droplets of water but it's really smooth. This is a nice sweetness up front. This is going to appeal to a lot of people that like a smooth, refined, eloquent sipping reposado tequila that has a sweetness to it. So I think I just need to finish this. What do you think? So my glass is down to the done done people. Yes, I finished it. Now I poured a little bit more of the Blanco so you know, we're going to mellowly sip that. But Disbelief Tequila, really unique bottle design. Um, I dig it because I'm a big baseball fan. The Old English D, nice sipper, you know, would be fantastic for cocktails. So I think that the owners completely accomplished exactly what they were looking for. Be sure to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, where you can see what we're going to be trying on future episodes. Life is too short to drink bad liquor, people. Choose wisely. We'll see you on the next episode. What should I do? Look at this. Look at this.